Hello to you newcomers and welcome back subscribers. This is Big Baby Props and I'm the Big Baby. And here we have the fully finished Commander Neo helmet. This helmet started out as a raw 3D print and in this video I'm going to show you how to finish it to look something like this. Very happy with how it turned out. I think it is very accurate. If you guys have a 3D printer at home and want to complete this project, I'll leave a link to the files in the description so that you can go check that out. If you don't have a 3D printer and want to complete this project, I do sell the raw prints to the helmet that we start with in my shop online with the file creator's permission, of course. So be sure and check that out if you want to complete this project but don't have a 3D printer. Now let's get started. So here we have our starting pieces for the Commander Neo helmet. These pieces have been individually 3D printed in PLA plastic. We've got the dome, the face, and the back, as well as a bag full of little extras here. Let's get on with assembling the helmet. Here's the supplies we're going to use. I've got a wooden board with a 150 grit pad of sandpaper glued to the top. Now, this is important to have on a wooden board or a flat surface because we're going to sand the edges of the helmet on them and we want our surface to be as smooth as possible. So having a board act as the foundation for your sandpaper is a great way to start. Here I've got some cyanoacrylate super glue. This is going to hold a bulk of the helmet together. You just need a few drops to hold all the pieces together and it dries pretty quickly. We've also got some Gorilla Glue clear contact adhesive. This is going to provide a bit of a stronger hold than the super glue, but it takes about a day to fully cure. So we're going to use the super glue first and then this stuff to sort of hold it in. Lastly, and this is optional, but I always like to have it, is a soldering iron. Now, if you don't know, a soldering iron is used to sort of join electrical components by melting a metal called solder. So that means this little tip here gets very, very hot. So what are we using it in 3D printing for? I use it to sort of join the seams before I apply super glue. I just sort of drag it along the seam very lightly and it will melt the PLA and the pieces will sort of fuse together so that I can follow it up with the super glue and then the Gorilla Glue contact adhesive. It's really great for holding the pieces in place as you start to glue them together. So, optional, but I recommend it. So the first thing we need to do is sand our edges. So let's go ahead and do that. You want to be sure and sand all of the edges that will be glued. So for the face, for example, we will sand these side edges as well as the top ring here. So let's do that. Now that we've got the pieces sanded together, they should have a much smoother seam between the parts as we join them. It also helps our cyanoacrylate superglue bond a bit better. So with my soldering iron plugged in and hot, I'll show you guys how I use it. So what I like to do is align the pieces together, grab my soldering iron, and then I only have to focus on a small portion. So I want to make sure that small portion is perfectly aligned, obviously. But then I can just lightly graze the inside and it will join the pieces ever so lightly. And now you can see that the helmet is being held together with nothing more but half an inch of welding. So. With that, I could go around the helmet more with the soldering iron. I might on the other side, but now we'll go around and apply our super glue. We'll just drip it on the inside, trying to make sure that we get it through the crack. I go for about a drop every inch or so. And you really want to work it in between the crack so it gets the best possible hold. So now, we want to kind of hold the helmet together 
to really press that glue in. And you want to try and pick spots for your fingers to rest that will make the piece flush. So if you can see my finger down here, I have it feeling out to make sure that it's flush as well as on the opposite side. So I'll hold this for about 20 to 30 seconds and that should give it enough time for the glue to settle. Okay, if it all worked out, you should have a completely flush helmet. It's very important to have the pieces flush together after you've glued them, because if they're not, it's going to create a lot more work for us down the road. Let's do the same with the top of the helmet. If the glue is set, I should be able to pick it up. So now I'm gonna go and follow through with our contact adhesive to really make sure that these pieces stay together. And obviously you want to do this on the inside of the helmet. Okay, that is looking great so far. We have the whole helmet. I'd put my head in it if the glue wouldn't make a mess all over me, but we'll have to save that for later. So the next step in the process is smoothing out some of these 3D printer lines. If you know anything about 3D printing, you'll know that it does it layer by layer of plastic. So naturally, you're gonna have layer lines. So the next step in our process is gonna to be to smooth out those layer lines, make it look movie quality, nice and smooth and shiny. So let's get on with that. So the first step in the smoothing and sanding process is using a product called Rust-Oleum Filler Primer. This stuff kinda of acts like a thick spray paint and what it's gonna do is it's going to fill in a lot of the smaller 3D printer lines that we don't want to use another product for. So. You can see I'm outside because this stuff smells pretty rank and you definitely want to do it outside or in a well-ventilated area. I've also got some lung protection on and gloves. Now you want to apply this stuff pretty heavily because you know you want to fill in the 3D printer lines and if it streaks a little bit that's okay because we're going to be sanding this baby so much that they'll all smooth out anyway. So they're going to fill in a lot of the smaller 3D printer lines really well. I'll generally do two to three coats of very heavy filler primer for each helmet, waiting about 20 minutes in between coats. Like I said, this stuff is going to act as a very nice base for us for our next product, which is going to tackle some of the heavier 3D printer lines. So there we go. When, when you're done with the layer, it should be kind of shiny. That's how you know that the product is kind of seeping into the 3D printer lines. So apply a few coats of that and we'll move on. Now that we've got a lot of the smaller lines filled in, we can focus on these big ones here like at the top of the helmet. And for that we're going to use a product called Bondo Glazing and Spot Putty. This stuff kind of comes out like thick toothpaste and after about uh, 30 minutes to a couple hours it'll start to harden and eventually we'll be able to sand it down to a smooth finish. So you can see me grab a tube and just pinch out some and wipe it on with a gloved hand. I found this is a pretty good uh, way to do this as you can really use your hands to work it into some of the smaller crevices or some of the harder parts to reach. So I'm applying a pretty hefty dose to the top here since that has some pretty uh, steep 3D printer lines but it's also general use so you can use it just about anywhere. I'll use it some places where the filler primer maybe wasn't so thick or uh, maybe there's some gaps in the 3D print itself that I wouldn't want to fill in with filler primer alone. Uh, this stuff works really well and it's a great catch-all for anything that isn't smooth really. So don't feel limited by the amount that you'll have to use. I also, of course, need to use it along the seams. Uh, this stuff, the seams couldn't be filled in with filler primer it would take probably three to four cans of the stuff. So this Bondo, since it's a great deal thicker, will work to fill in those seams a lot better. Just try and work it in and leave it a little bit overfilled, if that makes sense. So when you go to sand it down, you won't have a little divot in between where the seam is. And of course, we're gonna be sanding it down anyway, so using a little bit too much won't hurt anything. Again, like the filler primer, this stuff smells pretty bad, so if you, you want to do it in a well-ventilated room with some lung protection on. Like I said, this stuff is pretty well 
an end all for smoothing your helmet, you're going to need this stuff. You can't do it alone on filler primer. So once you have a good covering of Bondo across the helmet, give it about you know four to six hours to fully cure and let it harden before we start the next step, which is going to be sanding. So let's jump right into it. So sanding is definitely going to be the most time consuming step in the whole process. We're going to use a variety of tools and you might go through several rounds of sanding. So here you can see me using a mouse sander. This tool is very handy for maybe the first step or the first round of sanding. Uh, pretty powerful. It'll strip away a lot of the Bondo and filler primer, but that could also be a bad thing. So I like to just use it as a first kind of pass through, get the heavy stuff off, sand away a lot of the extra Bondo that we left on there, and then move on to hand sanding. For hand sanding, I typically start with a 150 grit. I just tear off a little square and go around the entire helmet, sanding it down a bit more. After the helmet is smoothed with that, we need to move up to a higher grit sandpaper, where it's got a finer kind of feeling to it, and it will leave the helmet feeling a lot smoother than the 150 grit. So again, I just go around the entire helmet with a 300 grit sandpaper, making it as smooth as I can. You can continue to go higher and higher in grits of sandpaper until you're satisfied with the smoothness of your helmet. I typically only go for 300, since I find that anything above that is probably uh, not worth it. Now at the end of this whole process, you should have a helmet that you are completely confident in its smoothness. It should f look and feel like movie quality. If that means that you need to go another round with the filler primer and Bondo, that's okay. Um, I typically have to go two to three rounds of the filler primer, the Bondo, the sanding, before I'm completely happy with how it looks. So if, you, if it doesn't look quite right on the first time, that's okay. You know, just take your time with it and make it to your own satisfaction. Like I said, this is easily the most time consuming part of the whole process. So if you guys can make it through this, you're gonna have one hell of a helmet by the end of it. The next step in the process is going to be applying our base coat of white. So let's get on with that. This next step is pretty self-explanatory. Most clone troopers have white helmets. So we're gonna have to apply a base coat of white. For this, we're just gonna use a flat white rattle can spray paint, nothing extreme very affordable. So something to keep in mind here is that just that you want to do very light coats. Uh, if there are any streaks at this point, you're going to have to wait for them to dry and then sand them down again. So we clearly don't want that. So apply very light coats. Typically you'll need three to five total coats before it's completely white. Just wait around 20 minutes in between each coat and you should be fine. As you can see, my helmet looks a little cloudy. That's because, you know, some of the gray from the filler primer is still peeking through. So that's okay. We'll get it covered in the next few coats of white. After the paint is dried, we're going to do some taping. Uh, we have some thick blue masking tape and some thinner masking tape to sketch out the Neo kind of design on his helmet. We're going to tape that out for our next step, which is going to be applying some latex and then painting up the finishing details. As you can see, we've got the helmet all taped up. We used a variety of masking tape, thick and blue for you know coverage, and the thinner one for more details. And we cut out the design with an X-Acto knife. We're gonna use this product called Liquid Latex. Uh, it's made for like makeup and practical effects. We're going to be applying it with a regular cotton swab. What it's going to do is we're going to paint it on just a few places and we're going to let it dry, we're going to paint over it, and then when the paint is dried, we can peel off the latex and it's going to give it a really cool kind of chipped paint look. Uh, it's going to add, add to the weathering effect that we're going to do later. Now you can really go overboard with this step, so I typically try and uh, hold myself back when I'm applying it, so I only do one or two little blotches here and there. So we're going to let the latex dry, and then we're going to paint our design. For painting our design, we're going to use a flat red primer. Uh, it's important here to make sure that your tape around the design is very secure and uh, attached to the helmet. If you paint it, it might seep underneath the tape in some places, so be sure and go around the design with your finger, making sure that it's all taped down properly. 
Make sure you have enough of the helmet taped off to where you don't accidentally spray it, like I did there. Luckily, it wasn't a huge problem here. Next up is one of the most satisfying parts of the whole process, the untaping. So now that your paint is dried, we can begin gently tearing off the tape around the helmet. This is probably one of my favorite parts of the whole process, just because it's one of those oddly satisfying feelings that you get. Seeing the nice clean lines from peeling off the tape. You'll want to peel the tape off kind of gently, because I've had it before where uh, I've actually peeled up some of the white paint and the Bondo and filler primer. It lifted it right off the helmet, so you want to do it kind of gently so that you don't have that happen to you. And now that we've got the design exposed, we can just rub off the latex paint. You can see me doing it with my finger. It's really easy and really simple, and I think it really lends a hand to the weathered effect that we're going to be going for. We're going to make it look like our Neo has seen a bit of action. Now we can get to the full weathering process. So now that we've chipped off some of Neo's design, I need to get the rest of the helmet to that same level of wear and tear. And for that, we're going to be using a pretty simple weathering method. You're going to need some black acrylic paint, uh, just a regular sponge brush, a cup with a little bit of water in it, and some paper towels. And what you're going to do is you're going to put some, some of the black paint, mix it in with the water, and it's really going to kind of dilute the paint a bit so that it's not, you know, just straight black. And what we're going to do is we're going to brush it on with our brush and then shortly after wipe it off with the paper towels. It's kind of hard to see in the video, but this process really, uh, it adds a bit of realism to the helmet. If you're going for a shiny, then you probably wouldn't do this step. But as far as realism, I like to do this on basically all my helmets. We're going to brush on the paint mixture all across the helmet. We're going to let it sit for a few seconds and then we're going to wipe it off with a paper towel. Now, some of the black paint is going to be left there and it's going to be kind of smeared around on there. It'll look make it make it look more dirty, which is what we're going for. It can be kind of difficult to get the right water to paint mixture at first, so I would recommend just having a bit too much water at first if you find that your helmet isn't as dirty as you would like it to be after you've wiped the paint off you could always just go through and do another layer or you can add more paint to the mixture but it can be kind of hard to take paint off if you find that you got the helmet too dirty when you're wiping it off uh, don't wipe it off to clean it off wipe it off to sort of get the effect that the paint is trying to do so, for instance, the paint will want to kind of seep into the cracks and the creases of the helmet. And if you go and wipe those off, then you're basically not doing much. But if you leave the paint in those creases and cracks, it's going to make the helmet look more realistic because that's how it happens in real life. Uh, the areas that get brushed off easily do so, and the areas that do not get brushed off easily become more dirty. So leaving the paint in the cracks adds a great deal of realism to the helmet. So I'm just going to go around the entire helmet, painting it in sections and then wiping it off with the paper towel. And like I said, it can be kind of hard to see in, in the video just because the, the lighting is kind of rough to see and the helmet's naturally white, so it's going to reflect a lot of light. But trust me guys, this makes a huge difference in the in the finish of the helmet. So I really recommend that you do this step. And the great part about this method is you can have a lot of variety. You know, if you want your helmet to be absolutely kind of nasty, like it was on a volcano planet or something, you can... I've done it where I just went with straight black paint and wiped it off almost immediately. That will make it you know really, really black and really, really worn looking, which depending on the type of helmet you're going for, might be what you want. But if you're not quite sure, start off with a lighter mixture. Now that we've got the entire helmet weathered, we can move on to the final step, putting a visor in this thing. I'm going to go over two different methods for a visor. One is a pretty cheap, it's just using a regular mosquito net and layering it over itself like three to four times. The other one is using this face shield that I found on Amazon. I'll leave a link to it in the description as well. This you can basically just 
tape and cut up on the inside of the helmet, then it'll, it'll look great. I'm going to be using the mosquito net method since it's a bit more involved and I'm saving the, the face shield for a different helmet. So what you're going to want to do is measure the height of width of the visor that you're going to need, kind of just roughly in your head, and then multiply the height by around four. So what that is going to allow us to do is layer the mosquito net helmet so that it's, you know, it's blacker and blacker and kind of harder and harder to see into. I found that three is pretty good, but you can do four to five if you want. So just cut out your section of mosquito netting and we're going to be using just a regular hot glue gun to kind of glue it down into place. I like to glue it together first just along the side edges so that it's easier to handle on the inside of the helmet. Once you have it pretty well secured, just go ahead and start gluing down in, on the inside of the helmet. You want to be pretty careful with uh, how you apply the hot glue because it might streak or uh, kind of string out and that might get stuck in the visor and can get pretty hard to remove. So be very careful when applying it. Once you're done, you should have a pretty reliable visor for less than a dollar, really. You'll still be able to see out of it, but people won't really be able to see into it very well. Well, that's it, guys. That is how you go from having nothing more than a raw 3D print to a fully finished Commander Neo helmet. I hope you guys learned something. I hope it helps you in your own personal projects. Remember that if you do not have a 3D printer, I do sell the raw 3D prints that we started with in my shop online. So if you want to support the channel, that's a great way to do it. Thank you all for watching. I hope to see you again in the next video.